All right, next map. This is uh, back in Scotland. This is another fairly large map, it seems. Uh, but this is Glencoe, the Highlands of Scotland. Um, should be a lot of fun. I've never driven it before. It's my first time out. Um, I did note that uh, AI is not set up for this. I don't have a um, two real profile for it. Didn't look for one. Um, that traffic can be dodgy. Um, and the built-in AI um, with CSP is not working. It's stationary, so there isn't an AI file and necessary information for this particular map. So just going to drive it and uh, see where it takes us tonight. Should be a lot of fun. Um, nice casual drive with no pressure. Welcome to Scotland. Sorry for all the shite you've had to drive through to get here. That's pretty funny. It's good stuff. And I don't see where I am on the map, which is kind of strange. We'll just drive around for a little while. See where it takes us. Should be a little bit of fun, I assume. Of course, I could be wrong. Oh, wow. That's kind of cool. must be something wrong with the map file for it not to be picking up uh, where I am. There's a shell if we need gas. Portable prices. This is a nice scenery, nice map. That's interesting. Little unexpected chicane action. Oh, 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 oh. I didn't write. And I turned rather suddenly. Okay, I must have taken a wrong turn, because this appears to be the end of the map? Or does this go on around? Like I said, first time driving this, so I have no idea where I'm going. Not that way in a ship? How'd you like to go cruising to Scotland on a cruise ship? That would be fantastic. I don't know why I'm being so careful to stay in my lane. I don't have any other traffic to contend with. Yeah, that's a giant cruise ship. Check that out. That's pretty cool. That's crazy cool.
was probably the coolest thing I've seen in a, in a Seto Corso map so far is a giant cruise ship. That was that was pretty neat. I don't know why that struck me as so interesting and unique, but that was pretty incredible. Pretty scenery, though. Seems to be a little bit more uh, complete than the uh, Glen Shell that we uh, drove uh, last week. Super tight roads, though. Where that goes. I always prefer to have traffic because you uh, not only do you get the benefit of the traffic, kind of having something interesting to see and dodge and make fun of as you drive along, but uh, also they know the map, <laughs> so you can you can follow them and get a gist of uh, where you're supposed to go. Quite the hill climb. Holy crap. It's crazy. <laughs> For fuck's sake, break. That's funny as hell. <laughs> That's pretty classic. <laughs> I like a map with a good sense of humor or a math author with a good sense of humor why I went down to first there. That was a little overkill. Little castle action going on. That is the coolest thing about Europe, just in general, is uh, get the chance to see some pretty incredible uh, castles in a lot of parts of Europe. Really give you a sense of uh, 
how ridiculously short uh, American history is. I was uh, got the chance to go to uh, Nuremberg for a conference uh, several years ago now, and uh, I took an extra day to get there, mostly because I was afraid that I was going to have jet lag and not be as sharp as I needed to be for the event that I was there for. And uh, so I took an extra day and got there, and uh, right there in the, the town there was um, a little tram that offering tours of of the area so i'm all like well, that sounds cool so signed up and got the next tram and went around and got shown all the sites and all the history and stuff and then uh one of the things that kind of showed parts of the castle areas of the castle um that you know some of it was in ruins some of it was uh was still standing and uh the main portion of the castle was uh, a museum you could walk through, and, uh, and so I decided after doing the tram tour and getting a sense of the layout, I, I went and I actually took the castle tour. It was incredible. It was kind of a, you know, go at your own pace kind of tour. Yeah. It was a lot of fun kind of uh, read about the history of the castle and uh, I guess uh, in Germany specifically and I'm, I'm sure this is true for just about anywhere where there are castles is that there were castles that were scattered throughout the entire kingdom and the reason for that is because of course back in that day you didn't travel very fast when you went anywhere and so if you wanted to stay in contact with your subjects you had to have not only time to travel, but then when you got somewhere, had to have a place to stay, a base of camp to, you know, spend, to go out and mingle with the people, I guess. So, uh, castles were used as kind of, you know, campaign camps, as it were, for that, that kind of purpose. I thought that was really interesting. I had no idea that that was part of the function of castles. Um, of course, you know, they also provided uh, a means to uh, fortify and protect oneself uh, in time of war, but, but they actually served a function outside of that that I, I had no idea about during that, the castle in uh, Nuremberg, Germany. Pretty cool. Got uh, the opportunity to travel for business to Malta once as well, and uh, the uh, citadel there, where the uh, Knights of St. John held back the Turks for like something like 30 days or 40 days, siege of uh, 1565, I think it was. Um, I didn't get to visit the actual citadel. You could see it um, from where I, I was. Um, and I got interested in the history after listening to a cab driver talk about how proud the Maltese people were about their role in that whole thing. They helped the Knights of St. John um, to survive and uh, very proud of that, that heritage for you know helping to repel the Turks, which outnumbered um, the Knights of St. John, I think something in the neighborhood of 500 to 1 or something silly like that. I don't remember the exact number. But, uh, got interested in the story, listening to this cab driver talk about it. And, uh, found a great book that was recommended, um, by a friend of, uh, the guy that I was traveling with. Matt Aldridge uh, was uh, my friend I was uh, traveling with for work. He now uh, is, uh, I guess for lack of a better term, you'd call him an evangelist for uh, open text. And uh, we worked together um, at Webroot. One 
of his friends, I guess, uh, recommended the book, and uh, it was awesome. I actually I did a review of the book. Um, it's on my blog at witsend.com, and I read it. It's still up, it's still posted. <laughs> favorite trips. I don't typically, when I travel for business, I don't typically take time for myself when I'm traveling. But uh, a couple of times that I have, um, I uh, really enjoyed it. That was w one of the times was uh, the German trip, the Germany trip that I was just talking about. But uh, another show. And prices aren't any better here. Well, they're a little better. Um, <laughs> Um, the other time uh, I did that here in the United States, I had a, a trip in Philadelphia, and I took the opportunity to go and visit the uh, Liberty Bell and all the touristy stuff there in Philadelphia. That was when I got my first introduction to um, the City Tavern, which really is no more, at least not in the form that I got to enjoy it. Um, at the time that I went, it was uh, still serving a authentic 17th century cuisine under the care and guidance of um, Walter Stabe. Um, Walter Stabe is a chef from the Black Forest region of Germany and uh, came settled in the United States and uh, ran this restaurant and it was phenomenal. It was such good stuff. In fact, I bought um, two of his cookbooks, oh, three of his cookbooks, I think, um, and uh, still um, at Thanksgiving make uh, sweet potato biscuits um, almost every year for, for Thanksgiving. Um, a lot of really good recipes in those books that were uh, recipes that were found and associated with the earliest days of American history, which, as we were saying, isn't that long ago in relative terms, but uh, was uh, quite cool. In fact, uh, the sweet potato biscuits that I make are supposedly um, a recipe that was uh, Thomas Jefferson's. Be cool. In that same book, um, I have uh, Martha Washington's uh, five layer chocolate cake. Who knows if it's really, you know from those people or if it's just uh, named for them but kind of fun to make them i made that cake once just once that took a long time to make that cake <laughs> the potato biscuits are labor intensive but um not so bad Another thing that I used to make out of that, I haven't made in a long time, is a uh, turkey pot pie. Um, there's that sign again. And that's really good. Also takes some time. You basically, basically uh, after you know you have your Thanksgiving meal, have leftover turkey. You can uh, make turkey pot pie um, with this recipe, and it's uh, it's quite tasty. I think I may have committed myself to do a little bit of uh, cooking this year. I'll probably make my sweet potato biscuits and 
there's a recipe that I want to say it's a, a Ghirardelli recipe. Don't don't quote me on that. Or uh, chocolate orange cheesecake. Always a fan favorite. see around some of these corners so I don't want to just go blistering through them until I know the map a little better. Although this is a ginormous map and I have no idea where I am on it. What a great map. Not sure what that sign meant. Usually the signs are like telling me which way to turn and that one pointed inward. I don't know if that just means it narrows. This, uh, this area is just a little bit southwest of the map we drove. Um, the other night, the Glenshale map, also in Scotland. I did actually crash a little bit. My uh, passenger, or not passenger, driver's side window over here is uh, busted out pretty good, so I caught that uh, side of the road pretty good. Didn't damage the front windscreen though. We get to drive through a castle, that's kind of cool. Well, this looks like a fun little. Uh,
would be phenomenal with traffic on it. I guess it would be a good map for uh, use for like a a free roam uh, server. But more cars on this would be pretty phenomenal. Not that it's bad, you know, solo, but... Hey, an IHOP. You really are everywhere. I wonder if there's really an IHOP <laughs> in the highlands of Scotland. That would be pretty funny. There can be only one pancake. It was a horrible impression. things that Seto Corsa is absolutely just phenomenal at is uh, force feedback is you know I can feel stuff in the wheel that don't feel quite the same way in just about any other sim and for a game that was made in what 2014 I think it was pretty crazy I don't know if you can hear my uh, Simicube uh, direct drive doing work, but it's uh, definitely I can feel a lot of stuff in the in the wheel. Pushing the corners hard, the ruts in the road. brick wall okay we'll call that good for now it's uh 30 minutes of joy on a pretty incredible map i'm gonna try to figure out if i can uh understand why the map is not showing me where i am but uh, other than that this is pretty cool uh, great map but 30 minutes is probably enough right let me know what you think give me comments Sport.